when you quit worrying about what other people think, you think you're going to look stupid. You think that uh, it's going to ruin your reputation. But what happens is the people who don't like you, the people who don't like the things that you're doing, the people that don't like the real you, when you quit worrying about other people, what happens is they leave your life. Like the, the negative influences go away and you start to attract more people who are like-minded and who are thinking similarly to you. So maybe you post something that's controversial, but that's your strong opinion that you fully believe. You might lose 20 followers, but you might gain 15 or 10 strong people that are, are ride or die with you now because you shared that and they feel the exact same way. So it's really all about you know growing your tribe and really creating a culture through through your own authenticity. Hey, what's up, guys? Ryan Glick here, and today I've got Jacob O'Connor on the show. Jacob is the host of the Venture Mentality Podcast, and he's also only a senior in high school. So it's really cool. He just hit episode number 100 or interview number 100 on his show, and he's interviewed a lot of really big names. So during this uh, episode, we talk through a lot of the uh, you know details around the podcast. We talk about how he's managed to connect and build relationships with so many people, especially some really big names. And he also shares how he manages his time. So as you can imagine, a full-time high school student, as well as someone who has multiple entrepreneurial ventures going on and his podcast. And with his podcast, you know, he released those 100 episodes uh, and counting, and he's released those episodes in a very short period of time, only seven to eight months. So it's not like he's just doing one episode per week or one episode every other week or one episode a month. I mean, he's doing multiple episodes per week and he's just cranking those things out. So super busy guy, but he gets all of it done and he shares a lot of that uh, insight during this episode. So really good stuff. You're really going to enjoy this. All right. Before we get into the interview with Jacob, you can find the show notes page for this episode at ryanglick.com slash episode 008. All right. With that said, let's jump over to the interview with Jacob. Hey, what's up guys? Jacob O'Connor is with me today. Jacob, how you doing, man? Doing well. How are you, Ryan? Yeah, not too bad. Um, so this morning, as I was getting ready for uh, our conversation today, uh, you just released episode number 100, which is just crazy. And the fact that you did that between seven and eight months time period, um, I want to start there because you know you started in, in the fall of 2019, you at some point made the decision that you wanted to start a podcast. You're a senior in high school and that's the route you wanted to go. I'm just curious, what motivated you to want to dive in and start this podcast and what were your initial goals with it? Yeah. So it, the decision to start a podcast was actually long before that fall, but working up the courage, it just happened to be fall whenever I ended up starting it. But so I, I was very fortunate in my junior year of high school, I was selected to be in an elite entrepreneurial program called the Monroe County Startup which basically the opportunity I was given is that the first two hours of the day of my high school day, I would be allowed to leave. And with the group of people, I would go throughout the community, uh, meet the local business owners, hear from different guest speakers, and eventually challenged to start a product or a service. I ended up going the product route, developing a seat cushion to help with shock vibrations for truck drivers. Um, and then a local trucking company, uh, a local seat cushion company actually got some interest in that ended up hiring me to be on their product development team for the summer. So that, that was before my senior year. And it was while I was working this job that I, I started listening to a lot of podcasts, trying to grow myself you know, mentally, trying to push some limits. And I was just super fascinated with the concept of talking to all these successful people and getting to, to pick their brains, to share the information with other people. And it, it really, it was a good opportunity for opportunity for me to answer the question that's always really been in the back of my head. And that is what separates the average Joes from your high performers? So why is Michael Jordan so much better than someone who might have the same or similar genetics? What is that driving factor? So each episode, which I just hit 100 today of the Venture Mentality podcast has been sort of aimed at chipping away at that question and unraveling the mystery. No, it's super cool. It makes a lot of sense. And I'm sure you've learned a lot of stuff over those 100 interviews, all the different people you've been able to connect with. Um, before we jump into that, I want to ask, because I think one of the one of the excuses we often make is that we don't have time. So whatever it is we want to do, you know, we want to take up something new, but we just don't have time to do it. So you're in school, you know, full-time student in high school. You're, you know, you have your ventures that you're doing and then you're running this podcast. So, um, how have you been able to manage your time? How do you fit in all the interviews? And it's not like you're just doing one interview 
a month or one interview, even a week, you're, you're, you're doing a lot more than that. So how do you manage that? So it's, it's been super challenging and it was a lot harder. I'm a basketball player. So, and I also decided to take a bunch of AP courses. So varsity athletics mixed, mixed with AP courses, mixed with entrepreneurial ventures was quite the challenge, but I, I was able to pull through and how I did it is just based off the premises of here's what I need to get accomplished in the day. And I'm going to give myself until I go to bed to accomplish it. So for example, there were times where I'd get back at 10 PM at night from a basketball game and I would still need to interview someone who might've been in a different country. So their time zone switch, I'd have to do an interview with them at midnight. I would need to do my homework from 10 PM to midnight and then at midnight do the interview. After that, I would need to edit the next day's episode um, and then set everything up for the release the next morning. And, you know, it just really came down to, I tried so hard to be so structured with everything in the beginning. It really gave me a lot of stress and anxiety. And what I realized is I just need to be crossing things off the checklist. It doesn't matter when I do them. It just matters that they get done. Gotcha. So you're making, so you're kind of a list person. You, you create your list of things you got to get done. And uh, as you said, you're going to get that done before you go to bed for the night. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, so with that, uh, structure that you have set up and everything like that, I was going to ask you too. So you're even editing your own episodes. Are you still doing all the editing and everything yourself? I, I yeah, I do everything. <laughs> One man show. All right, cool. So yeah, I mean, uh, that's pretty awesome. And I think that's, uh, you know, someone, you know, in, in my position right now, so I'm obviously a lot older than you, but, uh, you know, I have my, my own responsibilities and things that I'm doing. And as I brought on and started my episode very early, or sorry, my podcast very early on in doing this. Uh, that was one of the things I had to figure out is like, how am I going to fit this in with everything else I have going on? And exactly like you said, it's all structure. Structure is the thing that allows me to uh, be successful with this. Um, so with the hundred interviews that you've done so far and, and counting and continuing to go, what, uh, what's one key thing? I know you've, there's a lot of things, but what's one key thing that you've learned? Uh, maybe it's common that a lot of the different guests have told you or just something that you've picked up that you think would be helpful to the, you know, to the listener. Uh, it's a really hard concept to grasp because it sounds so simple, but it's a lot harder. And that, that is just to quit worrying about what other people think. And I, this can be super hard. I struggle with it. Everyone does. It's natural. But what happens is when you quit worrying about what other people think, you think you're going to look stupid. You think that uh, it's going to ruin your reputation. But what happens is, the people who don't like you, the people who don't like the things that you're doing, the people that don't like the real you, when you quit worrying about other people, what happens is they leave your life. Like the, the negative influences go away and you start to attract more people who are like-minded and who are thinking similarly to you. So maybe you post something that's controversial, but that's your strong opinion that you fully believe. You might lose 20 followers, but you might gain 15 or 10 strong people that are, are ride or die with you now because you've shared that and they feel the exact same way. So it's really all about, you know, growing your tribe and really creating a culture through, through your own authenticity. Nice. Do you have any examples in your life where, you know, there was something that you were holding back just because you were thinking about what other people were thinking? Yeah. Like honestly, just, just the podcast, it's been a really hard thing for me to share because it's something that people don't realize when you get behind a microphone, how hard it is to listen to your voice. And this is a conversation that I've had with a lot of people we all think that we sound terrible, but it's just natural to feel that way about yourself. And so it's hard to like expose myself to other people and to say like, Hey, if you're interested in this content, you can look at this, but knowing that my friends or these people or the people that I think are my friends are going to have to hear my voice and hear the things I'm talking about. It's been super hard, but it's important for me to know. And for everyone to know that it doesn't matter what, what they think you'll find other people. Yeah, for sure. So one of the other things too, that I think is very common is that when you start to do things that are not the norm, you know, what the normal person is doing. So you're taking the AP courses, you're in, you know, athletics, you're only a senior in high school, you're doing this podcast, interviewing all these successful people. Um, you're, you're kind of outside of what is normal. And so you may start to hear people saying things to you, such as, you know, you're missing out on high school. You're, you're only young once. Why are you doing this? You know, you can always do that later on. How do you, take that and either use it as fuel and motivation or just like brush it aside and continue going toward whatever, you know, your to, uh, toward your goals. Uh, I, so that, that was a really good point for you to make. What I have done is I've realized that yes, I might be missing out a little bit right now, but the future that I want to have and create 
is not nearly in alignment with what they want. So for the goals and things that I have set for myself that I want to look back and say, hey, I was able to do this. I was able to meet with this person. I know that I need to be doing what I'm doing right now. Quite frankly, I go to bed every night thinking, okay, I got a lot done today, but what if I would have done a little bit more? And it's just constantly, my brain's always turning like, what do I need to be doing to get me to the next level? And so that's really been driving me more than worrying about what I could be missing out on. Gotcha. No, real, real good answer. Really good uh, approach to take and a mindset to have on that. Um, so you, you've again met a lot of awesome people through uh, your podcast, and I think one of the things a lot of us struggle with is uh, trying to figure out how do you reach out and meet these people. How do you build relationships? How do you make these connections? And I'm just curious what your approach has been to reach out to some of these people. I mean, you know, obviously everybody who you've interviewed, they all have different, you know ease of access to them, but uh, some, you have some really big names that you've interviewed. How have you managed to do that and build relationships and make these connections? So essentially it's brute force and a good calendar. So what I mean by that is it is you sending a message every single day. It's, it's the slight edge effect of doing the simple daily task consistently and then the return that will come off them later. But it's sending out 20 messages a day via email, via DM, via different platforms and thinking like, okay, I know that only two to 5% are actually going to answer me, yeah. but let's make sure that the two to 5% that answer me are in this awesome list of categories of people that I've sent messages to. So for example, one of the things is uh, I interviewed Mark Randolph, the co-founder of Netflix, the first CEO. Um, and the fact that he started Netflix, like he is this huge person, super successful. And the, the way that I was able to get an interview with him is I was consistently reaching out. And then finally he answered me. But when he answered me, it was like back in last October. And so what he said is, hey, reach out to me in six months and I'll see if I have time. Most people would say, oh yeah, okay. And they'll think, okay, Mark Randolph, six months. And they'll put that in the back of their head. And then a year goes by and they're like, wait a second. What about that? Yeah, I was supposed to message him. What I did is immediately when people message me, I put it straight in the calendar. I do not leave anything up to myself for trust. And so I got a notification from my calendar. It said, hey, reach out to Mark Randolph. I was like, oh, okay. Sent him a message. He's like, I'm impressed that you still remembered and that, the, um, and that you reached out. And so he set me up with his assistant. His assistant vetted me and I, I passed all of the qualifications and boom, I had an interview with Mark Randolph. That's awesome. No, I'm again, same way, same exact way, especially with pretty much anything. And I put things in my calendar that people would look at me and just, you know, call me a fool for doing, whether it's people's, you know, birthdays, calling my parents, whatever it may be, man, it's in my calendar. I, I've got to be reminded of it because I don't want to leave it up to my brain. I just have too much going on in my brain that uh, need that calendar for it. Um, all right. So uh, one other thing I want to ask you, you uh, in high school had your um, internship and I'm just curious how you went about finding that internship. It's something that college students are always, you know, looking to get an internship for the experience for the, uh, something they can put on their resume and so on. You did this in high school. So how did you go about finding an internship? Yeah. So a lot of people are going to hate me for this answer, but I didn't find it. It came to me. Like I, I actually, so what happened is I had made a seat cushion and I needed help with the materials. So I reached out to this company, told them like, Hey, here's what I'm doing. Here's my vision. Here's the materials I need. Like, can I pay them for you and stuff like that? And they were like, dude, you're a junior in high school. Like this is, is insane. And so they started inviting me to their office to look at materials, to work on the project together. And then finally, I guess they realized that I had some valued input. I had some background knowledge. I knew what I was doing. And they were like, would you want to work here this summer for an internship? We'll put you on a product development team. You can help us stress test different products and come up with different ideas. And I was like, definitely. Cool. No, that's really neat. And I think, yeah, when you, when you take chances, put yourself out there and you work on things and stretch yourself, you, you do, you know, people call it luck, right? <laughs> but it's, it's not legitimate luck. I mean, you're, you're doing the work that brings that to you. So no, that's, that's really cool to hear. And I want to jump back to your really quick to your, your answer to the, uh, last question about the connections, because, you know, you're reaching out to all those uh, people. And the fact of the matter is a huge percentage of those people are going to reject you. Maybe, maybe a lot of them are never even going to reply. Some of them may reply and tell you no. How do you deal with that? Because I think that's something that is really hard for people in general to deal with rejection. Um, so how, how did you deal with that? And how have you? Uh, I mean, first of all, you can't take it personally, but I always approach it with an abundance mindset and with a mindset of like, I shouldn't even be here. So what I mean in that sense is what credibility does a, a senior in high school who is 
only interviewed a couple, like back in the beginning, I'd interviewed a couple of people. So what credibility does senior in high school with a couple of people under his belt have to interview someone like the founder of Netflix? And so I look at it like if they say yes to me, that's amazing. But do under no circumstance do I actually really expect them to even see this message? And so it's, the, and it's also with the mindset of abundance, knowing that one no just means that you can cut them off the list. And there's so many other people on this list. Like the world is full of fascinating, interesting people. And there's always going to be someone who's going to say yes to you. Yeah. No, that, that, again, makes a lot of sense right there. Um, with, uh, you know, being your senior year, you know, going through school, then all of a sudden, you know, COVID-19 happens and you're not able to finish out the school year, you know, like, like a normal school year would happen. How have you taken that and uh, actually kind of transformed it into more of a positive for you? Yeah. So obviously like it was upsetting because I miss my friends. I miss the opportunity to walk at graduation, to say goodbye to everyone, those type of things. But I was somewhat excited in the sense that I knew if everyone's stuck at home, people have a lot more time for interviews. And I myself, like th- this, as twisted as it may be, I've always been ho- hoping for like last year, like I need just time to myself to work on this stuff. And so as unfortunate as this situation is, it's a blessing in disguise in the fact that I've been able to get more done in the last month or two than I've done in a long time because I could sit down each day for hours on end, interviewing these people, editing the podcast, reaching out, scaling, starting this venture, doing this project. It's been you have to look at life. You have to look at the positives. Yeah. So what has your school been like? How, how's that yeah, been? School was super challenging because one, you're not in the environment. And so you, you don't have the teacher there to a keep you focused on task and B you don't have them there to answer your questions. Uh, and so w- with me, I, I get distracted from school in the sense that like, I'll get an email from something about a podcast or about a venture that I'm doing or I'll remember, oh, I should have messaged him or something like that. And so I'll stop and I'll have to reach out to them. But it's really hard to just get myself to focus in on school because my natural passion lies to do this. But I I ended up I ended up pulling through. I had people help me out, um, ended up doing just fine. Nice. And so you're done are you all done with school then at this point? Yeah, last Friday was our last day. All right, cool. So uh, what's what are the plans now? What are you gonna do now that you're done with uh, high school? Yeah, I'm going to keep working on the podcast. Got a couple other resources in the works. I'm super excited. Uh, actually, just got some shipments of apparel. I had a fan who nice. had heard of the podcast and decided to make some hats and stuff. So I think I might start selling some merchandise and stuff like that just to make a little bit of side income as I continue to scale different things. But um, the podcast, I was fortunate enough to receive an entrepreneurial scholarship to Wichita State. So I'll be heading there next year to continue networking and developing everything. <laughs> Sweet. No, that's really cool. And that's what kind of where I was going. I was just wondering if you were headed to college anywhere. And I mean, based off of your past and you know your experience and everything like that, you clearly have an entrepreneurial uh, mindset. And so it, it seemed like that's the path you were going to go. And I think a lot of people who have that entrepreneurial mindset don't necessarily see college as being something that they need to have. Um, and so I'm just curious from your standpoint, do you how do you see college helping somebody who is more of an entrepreneur and may just have that itch to, I just want to jump out there and start right now versus, you know, maybe going to school, learning a little bit more. I, I think that one of the main important things, is, so if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an entrepreneur of that mindset and you're questioning college, the, the, the main thing that I would use, unless you already have a business that's making money or it's got a proven model, the main thing that I would use as motivation is the networking. That's one of the things that I'm using is the fact that I know I'm going to get so many valuable connections and have the opportunity to work with so many great people. So that that's what, one of the things that's really been motivating me. Nice. Yeah. I think, uh, I think a lot of people do, you know, struggle with that. I, you know, obviously there's only a, a small percentage of people that tend to be more of the entrepreneurial type and there's a larger percentage of the other path. And I do agree. I think college is a great place for, um, at least from my experience, it was a great place to meet so many people, whether it's other students that could turn out to be business partners of yours or students that, you know, know people and you just can help each other out. It's uh it's a really good setting. And uh, so, yeah, I think uh, that's awesome that you're headed, headed to college and, you know, see where that path takes you. Um, Appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, any, uh, you know, going back to all the interviews you've done and just the experiences that you've, you've had, do you have any, you know, final pieces of advice or, you know, wisdom that you'd give, whether it's your own or something that you're borrowing from, you know, somebody else that you interviewed to kind of help somebody who may be in a, in a difficult time right now. Cause I, I think what we've seen is a lot of people, uh, especially a lot of college students who 
had maybe an internship lined up that got canceled for the summer or, you know, and maybe they're a, a junior in college heading into their senior year. So they're really banking on that to jumpstart them into uh, their career and everything. You know, what would you say to someone like that? Uh, that you never know when your next break is going to be. So we create opportunity. And so one of the things that it's been super helpful for, helpful for myself is remembering that these daily little things that I am doing are going to create opportunities down the road. There's been times where I've wanted to quit this. I've gotten super discouraged and I've gotten a random text from someone who listened to the podcast and loved it. Mm. I've gotten a phone call from someone who wanted to partner with me on something. It, there's so many benefits that come from just taking positive action each day. So what I want that person to know is that you may have lost this opportunity, but there's another door that will open as long as you keep doing things that move you forward. Absolutely. Well, hey, this was really good. Uh, I think that you know a lot of the advice you gave, I think it should be motivational to anybody listening in or watching this. It's uh, you know seeing the fact that you've been able to take on so many different things and still have time to continue forward and, and, you know, have that positive mindset of, you know, the future is bright and everything like that. So I really appreciate it. What's, uh, where can people find out more about you, connect with you, maybe, uh, look for some of that merch that you're going to get hopefully selling here sometime soon. Yeah. So you can find me, um, the podcast obviously is on Spotify, it's on iTunes. It's called venture mentality. Um, you can check it out there, but you can also find me on Instagram, uh, at the Jacob OC that's T H E J A C O B and then O C. So th- that's kind of my personal brand that I've just started that I'm looking to grow, but I'm happy to connect with people and share any advice or any help that I can give. Sweet. Appreciate it, Jacob. This was really good. Uh, thanks again for, for joining me. Sweet. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, guys, there you have it. Thanks again to Jacob for joining us and thanks to all of you for uh, listening in. Uh, really good stuff there from Jacob. I would definitely encourage you to check out his podcast, Venture Mentality, and uh, you can hit him up on Instagram as well. So again, really appreciate all of you. Really appreciate Jacob. And uh, if you would, please go ahead and like and subscribe and turn on your notifications. I've got a lot more interviews coming and you're not going to want to miss them. All right. Thanks a lot. Until next time, take care.